Hi everyone, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. So if you follow me over on Facebook, you may remember that I asked you guys a question and I asked whether or not you prefer the functional tutorials or more theory based. And the vast majority of the responses were saying, why not both? So I took a look at the videos that I had on my channel and I realized there aren't many theory videos on there at all. So what I want to do, I want to start a new ongoing series that I'm just going to call What Is? And I'm going to pick and choose a few common features that are present in Unity or C Sharp in general. And I'm going to try and give you a, a more comprehensive description of what those are. And as you may have guessed by the video title, today we're going to be taking a look at What Is a Mono Behaviour? But before we actually get into this, I just want to thank GT3000 for sponsoring this video. Got links down in the description to his website and his Twitter. The website's been optimised recently, it's a lot better, well done mate. But yeah, go give him a follow and check out latest updates on their upcoming game. So, when you're new to Unity, you may notice that mono behaviour is part of any new script that you generate by default. So, you might think that it always needs to be there, but... This isn't actually the case. There's a good number of reasons why you would never need to have mono behavior on your script, but we'll come to those later. First of all, what is a mono behavior? So we'll take a look at this raw script here that I've generated. I'm just gonna start this off with, if you're familiar with inheritance, you should already know what's going on here really. So here we can see the beautiful mono behavior in its natural habitat. So really basically, a mono behaviour is a class of its own. It's a base class that comes with Unity as part of the Unity Engine namespace that gives any class that you generate that inherits from it a set of pre-designed functions, events and behaviours that are determined by Unity. Now if you want to know more about inheritance, I do already have a full video explaining that on my channel. I'll pop a link in the description and probably a card up in the top corner. You can go and check out that. So coming back to these pre-designed functions, the two most common that you've obviously seen before, unless this is your first time opening up a new Unity script, those are the start and the update functions. Now they come from mono behavior. And we can see that if we were to remove mono behavior, we don't get any errors, but we see that the IntelliSense color changes. And the reason for this is Start and update are no longer coming from mono behavior. What is a mono behavior has now created its own reference to start and update, which is completely valid. But now they won't behave like we expect because these are now just bog standard methods with no functionality in the background. And if we save this, we can see that part of a mono behavior is it's reliant on being attached to a game object. So, in our example, I've just got the main camera here. If we drag what is a mono behavior onto our main camera, we see we get an error because we don't actually derive or inherit from mono behavior. Now, the reason for that, and that is a very common error that I see popping up on Facebook and in forums, is because if a script is attached to a game object, the engine, the Unity engine itself, expects to be able to control it in a specific way. And the way that it does that is through mono behavior. So if it can't access that, there's no use in having that script on a game object. So Unity flags that as a warning. So you know that something's wrong, something's missing. And what is missing is the mono behavior. So we just add that back in, save. And now we should be able to drag and drop this onto our main camera. And we can. So what else does mono behavior do other than give us access to our start and update methods? Well, we also have the late update and the fixed update. Those again come from mono behavior, but we can also tap into some Unity predefined events. And again, some of the most common ones that you may have already used are things like void, on trigger enter, and on collision enter. So again, these are part of the mono behavior class and are designed in such a way that they automatically take care of certain events, or if not take care of them, give you an indication that that's happened on trigger enter, for example. As soon as your object 
enters a trigger. On trigger enter has a callback to tell it that that's already happened. So you can tap into that and then tell the game object to do whatever you want in that event. And without mono behavior, you couldn't do that. So clearly mono behaviors are extremely useful and you couldn't really build a game without them. But like I said at the start of the video, they aren't necessary in all situations. So let's take an inventory system for example. The inventory isn't actually a physical object in the game in most cases. It's just a string of back-end functions and lists that are responsible for keeping track of the objects that your player is currently holding. So in this case, it wouldn't actually make sense to create an object in our game's hierarchy to hold an inventory script. It's just not needed. So we can instead create a standard C-sharp script that doesn't inherit from mono behavior, and we can make it static, like this one. So as you can see, I'm not even using the Unity Engine namespace. I'm not inheriting from mono behavior, and I have a static class and a static list. Now, if you guys want an in-depth description of what static is, let me know in the description, and maybe I could add that to the list of what is episodes that I'm planning on doing. So why have I made this static? Well, first of all, you can't actually make a mono behavior class static. You can have static methods within it, but the class itself can never be static. And the benefit of this is we can ensure that there's only ever one inventory class in our game ever because we're only ever going to need one and because we know there's only ever going to be one we can just directly access this class whenever we like so if we pop over to our what is a mono behavior script we can see that if i start typing i get inventory dot and we can see that our stored weapons list is readily available for us there we get that error because i'm not setting it to anything we can see if I create a new weapon, W equals that, we get no errors whatsoever. So the reason behind that example is we have a static non-mono behavior script that's being accessed directly via a mono behavior. Another key example of when we don't actually need to use a mono behavior is when we're creating custom data classes. For example, we'll take our weapon and as you can see, we have a string for a weapon's name, and we also have a custom object, which is weapon parameters. I'll just call that parameters. And in our start method, we can set the damage to 100. And if we take a look at weapon parameters, we see this doesn't inherit from mono behavior, whereas weapon does, because this is the one that's going to be attached to the weapon game object. And all we're doing is declaring damage and durability. So each weapon is going to have those parameters. But this leads us on to another topic, which is serialization. Now mono behaviors are actually serialized by default, so we can actually see the values or the public values in the inspector. So if we pop back over to Unity and we'll just create an empty game object, we'll call this weapon, and we'll drag our weapon script onto it. Now we see the first problem is we can't see our weapon parameters, but we can see weapon name. Now the reason for that is weapon name is native to the weapon class, which inherits from mono behavior. So by default, weapon name is serialized. Unity doesn't understand what weapon parameters actually are, but we can fix that by serializing our weapon parameters class ourselves. So we head over to weapon parameters and above the class declaration, we can use system.serializable. And if we save that, everything else remains the same. We pop back over to Unity, let it compile. And we see now that we've set our parameters class as serializable, Unity knows to display it in the inspector and we can see our damage and durability. So as you may have noticed, there are, are a few caveats and a few different little things, little tweaks that you've got to make, dependent on which route you take. But to wrap it all up, mono behavior scripts are the way to go if you plan on using the given features in a game object, such as like your collisions, triggers, physics events, and so on. In that case, you will be required to use a mono behavior. If you aren't, then you don't need them. There's no need to have mono behaviors 
when they're unnecessary. They just create unnecessary overhead and potentially cause errors further down the line because something's been given a behaviour that it doesn't actually need. So the takeaway tip for this is plan out your classes beforehand and take a little bit of extra thought as to whether or not you think you're going to need mono behaviour functions for that class. So I hope this has been useful. Please let me know in the comments if this is actually a useful practice. Obviously this is the first video, you may want me to change a few things, describe things a little bit differently, go into more detail, maybe there was too much detail, I don't know, you tell me what you want. Drop a comment below, let me know. But that's everything for this week, so I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized Unity hints and tips.